So this is a small add-on video to section uh, 7.1, the first video. So I'm going to run through a few examples here. So you might uh, have noticed that some of the examples are all equal to a value for 7.1. You might see some examples in your uh, homework that aren't equal to a value. They're equal to zero. All that means is the first step you're going to do is move the 5 over as well, or whatever the value happens to be. So in this case, I can subtract 5 on both sides, and I can subtract my 2x on both sides to leave me with my y isolated on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have a minus 2x and a minus 5, because I would be subtracting a 2x, and I would be subtracting a 5 from the right-hand side. On the left side, these two values would be gone because I've subtracted them. From this equation now, you should be able to tell me what the slope is, which is negative 2, and what the y-intercept is, which is negative 5. Another example doing the same similar type of idea. So first of all, we're going to add 4 to both sides and subtract the 3x from both sides as well. So on the left-hand side, I'm left with a negative y, be careful, negative y equals negative 3x plus 4. My final step to get rid of this negative sign in front of the y is to divide everything through each term by a negative 1. So on the left hand side I get just y on its own, now it's finally isolated. And on the right hand side, negative 3 divided by negative 1 is a positive 3x, and 4 divided by negative 1 is a minus 4. This means that my slope in this case is 3 not negative 3 like we had up here, 3 because remember we had to divide by the negative 1, and my y-intercept is of course negative 4. So those are two types of examples where they would be equal to 0, the equation, and you just have to move the value over. Next I want to run through a table of values type of question. If you see a table of values, it might be a good idea to think of each one of these things in terms of a coordinate point. So from the table of values, I could get two points. I would have 0, 520. And another point would be 10, 770. I could find a third point as well, given the third value that I have below. Um, but we'll just use these two for, for now. So for the slope, I can use the slope formula, right? My y2, so my 770, minus my y1, which is my 520 over my x2, which is 10, minus my x1, which is 0. 770 minus 520, you can use your calculator for that if you need to. So 250 over 10. I could reduce this, and I could just say this slope is 25 over 1, or just simply 25. So the slope in this case is 25, or 25 over 1 might be a better way to write it, so you know what your rise and your run are. The y-intercept, of course, is when the x value, when my x value is equal to 0. And when my x value is equal to 0, is right at the very beginning. So my y-intercept is going to be 520. So my y-intercept, you can look at it as the value of b when it's written in y equals mx plus b form, but the y-intercept as well is also when my x value is 0 and I have some value on the y-axis where the uh, graph crosses. Finally, for my equation, if I'm writing this in y equals mx plus b form, this is a little bit simple because now I have these two values. I have the slope, which is my m, and I have 520, which is my b. So I can write this y equals 25, or 25 over 1, x plus b, which is 520. You might be asked questions, you will be asked questions on the quiz, about these uh, using this equation. So you first of all have to find the equation, and then you'll be given questions. You could ask, What's the y value? Or, or if this could be in terms of cost, what would the cost be if a certain number of items were sold? In this case, I'm just asking you what the y value is when x is 25. Because 25 doesn't exist on my table of values, I'm going to have to take 25 and plug it into x. So I replace x with 
25 plus 520. And again, this is stuff you can do on your calculator as well. So 25 times 25, 625, and then plus 520 is 1145. So that's my y value when x is 25. We could go back the other way too and say, what's your x value? What, if I'm looking at my graph or I'm looking at the table of values, I'm going to pick a value that's not even in the table of values, but we, we can figure it out using the equation, this equation, which is key, to, to answer these questions. So for the x value when y is 1895, what I do is I take my 1895 and I substitute it in for y this time. And that's going to be equal to 25x plus 520. Now this time I need to solve for x. So I'm going to have to subtract 520 on both sides first. So 1895 minus 520, 1375, which is equal to, and I'm left with 25x on the right hand side. And you might be able to quickly see, oh, now I just divide by 25 on both sides. So I take 1375 and divide by 25 to get 55 which is equal to my value for x. So this tells me that when x is 55, or when my cell 55 items, then my value for y, my cost, or whatever it happens to be, will be 1895. Now, here's a hint for question four on the quiz, because it's not quite covered f exactly the same way as it is in your from your um, assignments. There isn't a question that's exactly the same. So this might be uh, a little bit of an extension from what you've learned in your assignment or what you will learn in the assignment. So you'll be given a, uh, an equation f equals 75t plus b and the value of t is in time and the value for f is in it's in money. It's a money value. It's a fee. So part a says in four hours of time, suppose a decorator spends four hours of time uh, and charges the client $450. So determine the parameter value for B. So the first thing we do is we take four, which is the number of hours in time, and we plug four into T. But before we can solve for B, we have to also plug 450 into into the fee. So what we do is we take these two values and we substitute them into our equation and we solve for the missing third value. So my f value is 450 is equal to 75 times t which is 4 plus b and we're going to solve for b. We're going to solve for that missing value. So I multiply 75 by 4. I get 300 plus b on the left hand side, 450 on the, on, sorry, on the right hand side. On the left hand side, I still have 450. And then to isolate b, to solve for b, of course, I have to subtract 300 from both sides. So I get 150 is equal to my value for b. For the last question, I'm not going to solve this one for you, but this will give you an equation for the first, the first part will give you the equation. It will give you the equation f is equal to 75t plus 150. And then when it asks you for part b, where set $975 is the fee, we plug $975 into f, and we have to solve for that missing value for t. So I'll, I'll leave this one up to you. Again, this is solving equations, right? So subtracting on both sides and then looking to see what you have to divide by. So hopefully that helps you with uh, the more questions from 7.5 or 7.1. Uh, now, please just go to your assignment guide, follow the assignment guide and uh, do the questions as well. Thank you.